Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys new here, teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. Here we are kicking off the new month, June 2023. Let's see what we can expect for all the signs. You guys definitely like, share. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We have tons of videos coming through for you guys. All month I'm going to be very active. Um, trying the best we can to find more time and giving you guys uh, more videos, more spell work, more tips and tricks, and more tarot lessons. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see what you can expect for this month. Let's begin. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ancestors and archangels, please step forward. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly. We're going to start here with our lovely Geminis. It is Gemini season for those of you guys that are Geminis. Well, it's your month. Make sure to make it the best. Make it your month, right? <laughs> those of you guys that are interested in any of our books, you'll be able to find the journals and the book on the description link below, as well as our online store for any of the services that we provide. Let's get into it. Let's see what we can expect for this month of June 2023. We're going to begin here with my lovely Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It is Gemini season, like I said, so let's see. Let's see what we can expect. Spirit guides, ancestors, what are the messages that we have here for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of June 2023? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what new opportunities are coming your way what are going to be some of the challenges that you need to work through gemini sun moon rising venus okay one more shuffle all right here we go we're starting off here with the death card major transformation for a lot of you guys there is a lot of transitions that are happening right now in your life um this can also indicate Pluto's energy, you guys. Um, we are going to be re or experiencing um, Pluto going retrograde back into Capricorn um, before it fully moves into Aquarius and stations there for 2024. So there could be some things that, um, that perhaps you were dealing with last year that are going to be coming up. Um, in regards to endings, in regards to ending cycles for some of you guys, um, this is feeling very much like um, Scorpio energy. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Scorpio in your life or someone that's going to be very, very active this month for you. But overall, I do see major transformation that's happening. Now, you have to let go of old patterns, old behaviors. Um, old cycles and again with the death card this could be encouraging you to let go i know a lot of the times we kind of become very accustomed or stay very comfortable in our comfort zone but that has brought very little change to you gemini so this month it's almost like you're being propelled to embrace new beginnings and with these new beginnings it is going to take a bit of a challenge for you to let go of, like I said, old behaviors, old patterns. If you're wanting change and you want to experience um, more momentum, more movement, really you want to make sure that you take on this amazing energy of transformation. And through this transformation, it also involves having the need to let go of your comfort zone. So for some of you guys, this could be... Um, having the need really to embrace new beginnings, having the need to embrace new people, um, getting out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself is going to be very beneficial for you. Why? Because we see that in the past you've been either reserved or you've pulled your energy back. Uh, perhaps for some of you guys, maybe even isolated yourself for a bit. And there is this newness of energy and you need to fully embrace it in order to embrace that, in order for us to see changes Sometimes it takes for us to actually go out of our way to make that happen. So they're encouraging you here, Gemini, that it is very crucial and a detriment uh, to the growth for this month for you to fully embrace and take on and take that, you know, that lead or 
that charge of leading your life by your own terms. And this is something that is going to be very prominent for you. Now, for some of you guys, you're very, very intuitive right now or picking up on a lot of spiritual, or I should say getting a lot of spiritual downloads. Listen to your intuition, Gemini, because you are being pulled into the um, into the spiritual realm. So for some of you guys, this could be opening your horizons or opening up to uh, new practices, new religions, uh, new spirituality or something that really resonates with your soul on a deep soul level that you're going to really be pulled towards the depths of what fundamentally is going to ignite your soul. So I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I feel like for a lot of you guys, the flame kind of was going out. For some of you guys, this could be just a representation of the mundane, of the everyday type of energy. It becomes very accustomed and it becomes very boring. Um, but with the high priestess here and the moon, this is talking about like really being pulled towards the depths of what really ignites your soul. So again, the best way to do this is to fully embrace the opportunities that come your way and take on these opportunities. Be a little bit more spontaneous, Gemini. This is really what's going to open up for you this month. Now, you also have the three of cups here, and this is your advice. And the advice for the month of June is learn to have fun. This could be disconnecting from, you know, your everyday or work life, family life, um, really giving yourself or nurturing yourself, giving yourself enough time to make sure that you're properly taken care of. Um, so what does this mean? This could mean that if you're overworking or putting a lot of work and or a lot of work and energy um, and time into your work life, it's time that you start nurturing your personal life as well or vice versa. Now, we also do have here the Four of Cups, and the Four of Cups is, again, having the need for spontaneity, having the need to break away from the routine is going to be very important for you. That's what's going to bring to you a lot of new experiences, and these are experiences that I feel for the majority of you, you're already experiencing on a soul level. There's something within you that just feels like there is newness coming or there's something that is about to happen in your life that is exciting, but you can't really put your finger on it. The reason for this is because spirit is preparing you to open yourself up completely to show you or to, to, to be able to get to a point of being able to see the world in very different eyes. And finally, we have here the page of pentacles. So again, I feel like you're going to be challenged this month in getting out of your comfort zone. And if you choose not to, you're going to be experiencing a bit of setbacks or a bit of resistance. And the reason for that is because spirit is wanting you to shake off whatever it is that you've been carrying for quite a while and to fully embrace a new beginning, to fully embrace new opportunities and new experiences in your life. For some of you guys, like I said, you're going to be very, very called towards spirituality or towards religion or anything like that that is really going to open your mind up uh, to bigger and broader possibilities. However, I do see that this month is going to be... Uh, almost a necessity for you to reconnect with yourself, reconnect with your soul. And if you feel like you your energy has been a little bit low or like you feel a bit disconnected from people and from, you know, the everyday type of thing or even your partner, if you're dating someone, um, you feel a bit, like I said, disconnected. The reason for this is because there is a need to recharge your soul. And in order to recharge our souls, sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we have to take a walk, you know, a walk to the park to recharge our energy, to get that, you know, that solar um, rays of sunshine. Um, getting out of what is comfortable for you is going to bring to you new experiences and new opportunities, my lovelies. All right. So now we're moving along here. We're going to look into... Let's see what's going on here with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I had to think about it there for a minute, you guys. <laughs> Give me one second. We got a card flying out. All right, Cancer. Before we begin your reading here, the Ten of Swords wants to make its presence known. For a lot of you guys, you are at the almost culmination of an ending cycle and beginning a new phase in your life, a new cycle. 
for for a lot of you guys, this could be almost like there's been a moment in time of isolation or um, really reflecting or pulling your energy back, not really being very social. But this is finally coming to a culmination. Like I said, there are uh, major changes that are happening right now for you. And you're at almost the tipping point of a new beginning or embarking on a new beginning. So we're going to put this back into the deck. Let's see what's going on with Cancer's Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Do you guys like the roses? They are so beautiful and they are blooming all over my freaking garden. Yes, these are the roses that I use for my spell work on here, you guys. <laughs> my garden has so many roses. We have white, pink, red, yellow roses. And they are looking marvelous. I just, they were just calling to me earlier today. So I picked these two. All right, let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right, Cancer, first card we have is your card, the Chariot. So there is momentum that is picking up for some of you guys. For some of you guys, you're embarking, you're getting ready to embark on a new journey, a new beginning. Something that has a lot to do with building your future. For some of you guys, it's walking towards or uh, really thinking about your future, putting into action um, the goals or the aspirations that you're trying to make happen. If you feel like in the past uh, there's been a very slow pace or very little progress, that's not going to be the case no more. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're finally on the cusp of overcoming obstacles where you felt like there was a bit of setbacks or a bit of resistance. That's no longer going to be there. I feel like this month of June is all about, it's all about making quick headway. Um, so for a lot of you guys, it's going to feel almost like uh, things are happening uh, very, very quickly. Um, and again, it, it's almost a feeling like a fresh of breath air, or a fresh of clean air. Um, it, it's it's going to feel like you're finally not being challenged. Like life is, uh, I see for some of you guys even questioning like, oh, is this is this too good to be true? No, it's not. Uh, embrace it, fully embrace this energy because I do see major momentum and headway for you guys for this month of June. Now you also have here the Page of Cups and the Sun card. So for some of you guys, um, I do see that there is uh, a connection that may be unfolding for this month. For others of you, if there was a bit of a break, I do see the possibility of reconciliation here highlighted very strongly here with the Page of Cups and the Sun. Now, for those of you guys that have been embarking in a very long process, in a very long process of working on yourself, and maybe you've been spending uh, or you've spent quite a few, t um, a bit of uh, time, I should say, on yourselves and uh, perhaps maybe not dated for a while. That's quickly going to be changing for you guys. Why? Because we see major momentum and headway in regards to your love life. You do have the sun and the page of cups. So love is finally opening up to you. What you need to do is stop resisting it. Stop being so much in your head about it. Uh, if it is a reconciliation that you've been hoping for or wanting uh, or expecting someone to reach out, get out of your head. I feel like the, the reason why you've experienced a bit of like... Uh, a bit of, uh, what's the call, what's the word? A bit of having to wait has a lot to do with your fears that were kind of taking over. The two of swords is the need for isolation to hear your inner voice. Um, so again, this can help you uh, open up more possibilities for you or have quicker movement if you actually do things that help you master your mind. Like what? Like yoga, like meditation, um, learning to disconnect sometimes and sometimes you know our mind could be a chatterbox <laughs> it doesn't stop <laughs> and if you're one of the ones that just feels like uh, you don't really know how to turn it off um, meditation is is the gateway to bringing peace and inner peace above anything um, really incorporating this in your everyday life is going to like substantially help you and like i said you'll start to see major movement and momentum 
For some of you guys, you do have a air sign that you're going to be dealing with this month. Air sign could be Aquarius, a Gemini, Libra. Doesn't have to be. It could be their sun or moon or rising. Um, however, I do see communication, like I said, opening up, coming your way. Knight of Swords is quick momentum, communication to the point. Um, having a conversation for some of you guys about um, the moving on or should we move on or should we give each other a new chance. Uh, Six of Swords is the moving on, but uh, someone in this connection, if you are dealing with someone from the past or you're hoping to hear from someone about the past, uh, with the Six of Swords and the Knight of Swords, it's like they're reaching out or they're moving towards you. And the reason for it is because there is fear that you're moving on. So again, like I said, if you're waiting or hoping for some type of communication, that's definitely happening this month for you. Now, you also do have here the Magician card, and the Magician is that of your hopes and desires. So for some of you guys, you're being able to see the full manifestation of something you've been hoping for, something that you hold very dear to your heart. For a lot of you guys, you could actively be working on manifestations, and you're finally being able to see the results of that this month. Um, major, major headway, like I said, Seven of Wands here. Uh, sometimes the seven of wands could represent having the need to kind of get out of our own way, stop being so stuck in the mud. Um, so again, if it is that you're working towards manifestations, towards goals, towards things that you're wanting to achieve, meditation is really going to help you guys. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with my beautiful Leos. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Leos for this month of June 2023? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these readings, definitely like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. What can you guys expect for this month of June 2023? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Leo, you're starting off with the star card. So for a lot of you guys, synchroni uh, synchronicities are happening right now. Um, for some of you guys, it's the wish uh, or the wish fulfillment that is going to be manifesting or unfolding for you this month. Um, the star card does symbolize being able to see some type of hope in a situation where you felt like it was a very bleak or like hope was very bleak. Uh, it's like your faith is being restored uh, this month. So um, if you have lost hope in some type of situation, you're going to be able to see that it actually starts to progress in a very positive way where your mind or the shift in your mind actually happens this month. Um, and it's based on being able, like I said, your faith is being restored here is what they're saying. Now you do have the eight of cups and this is the obstacle that needs to be overcame this month or overcome this month. The Eight of Cups is realizing when it's necessary to walk away from certain situations, people, or circumstances that are no longer in alignment with your energy, with your goals, with your aspirations, where you're going basically in life. Um, and I see like for some of you guys, you're going to be challenged in this aspect. Uh, for some of you, it could be that your faith is being restored in regards to emotions. Things start to move in a way that you're optimistic and very positive. But someone may pop out out of the woodwork, right? Trying to contact you or trying to hold you back to the old energy. With the star card, the spirit spirit is basically telling you, uh, now is the time to move. Like, get it moving. Uh, keep walking. Don't turn away or, or not turn away. Don't turn back um, because it's only going to serve you as a distraction. So whatever situation you're currently going through, like I said, you're going to be starting to see almost alignment start to happen. If there is some type of distraction or you feel in, in this month like there is a situation that comes up where you're kind of being forced or it seems like you're being pushed towards revisiting something about the past, try to work through that and try the best you can not to stay there too long in that energy because what they're telling you is it's time for you to move on. So do not go to the past is what they're saying. Now we also have the Four of Cups here, a bit of, uh, like I said, a bit of uh, uncertainty, a bit of um, perhaps not so much excitement for some of you guys, even boredom at some point, but that's in the past. That is energy from the past going towards the star. 
you're starting to see things move in a very positive way. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's going to be, it's almost going to feel like you are on this journey of like really pushing your limits as far as can you see the bigger picture is basically what I'm hearing. So again, being able to see the bigger picture is not being able to, or for some of you guys, not being able to see like the whole staircase, but as long as you can see the first two steps, then take those first two steps. You know what I'm saying? They're telling you, get it going. Now you also do have the hanged man here. So again, with star and the hanged man, there is something that's happening right now with you. Your way of feeling, your way of thinking, your view on life, is going to be changing for the positive. It's almost like they are aligning you to your purpose, to your desires. Uh, you're being able to see things from a whole different perspective. And again, the star is one of the most beautiful major arcanas in the tarot because it signifies hope, wish fulfillment, and the universe itself revealing to you um, the path that you should be taking or the path that you should be walking towards. And with the hanged man, it's being able to see things from a very different perspective. But at the same time, it is a perspective that is going to change your way of thinking. And by changing your way of thinking, you're being able to move forward in a positive way, um, being able to experience more changes and more positive outcomes in your life. Now, you also do have here the three of pentacles. So there is almost this uh, feeling like you're going to have to be dealing with other people's uh, dramas or perhaps people needing to rely on you on an emotional level. Though it may seem a bit draining for you, it is necessary at this point. Um, understanding that at the end of the day, I mean, Leo, you know, you are the lion. <laughs> uh, Six of Wands is always a victory, but it also speaks about population or popularity. Um, so I do feel like uh, this month you're going to feel a bit like people are asking too much of you. Um, and the reason I say that is because of the Eight of Swords that is here. But the Six of Wands does indicate being able to overcome uh, these minor little uh, conflicts in regards to drama because I am hearing drama. Um, this could be with family. This could be with loved ones that are just dealing with a lot in their life right now. And they may be coming to you for, you know, some coming to you in confidence, uh, wanting some type of guidance from you. Like I said, six of wands is overcoming that, um, but also being received in a very positive way. Um, for some of you guys, this can also indicate, because I do have the star card, um, getting some type of recognition, um, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with the situation at work where maybe there's a lot of drama, there's some type of recognition that's coming your way this month. Um, whether it's either people like uh, really putting you, you know, really putting you on the type of person that they could rely on or almost like you can carry the whole burden. Um, not that you should, uh, but there is some type of recognition that's coming your way. Uh, and I feel like it's very unexpected. Um because maybe in the past they've kind of overlooked or they haven't really appreciated what you've done or what you've contributed. Um, but I do see that unfolding. Why? Because we have the seven of pentacles here. So it's something that you've earned. Um, now with the hermit here and the five of wands, I'm going to be honest. I feel like you're very well liked in the workplace or where you work, how you make money. There is something that has to do with recognition or for some of you guys, it could be like a reputation that you have at work, uh, that you're a hard worker, that you keep to yourself. We do have the hermit here. Um, but it also makes people intrigued and nosy, basically, is what I'm hearing. So I feel like this month you may be challenged in the sense that because we do have here the six of wands, I feel like people are going to be trying proactively to talk to you or to make more conversation with you or to hang out with you, maybe outside of work. But I feel like the reason for it is because they're wanting to know what your deal is. So my advice to this is, I mean, if you're into social outings and stuff, that's fine. Just be careful um, because underneath it, there is like a secret competition that's going on. So 
Um, like I said, if it's something that you're just not feeling, definitely don't really open that up. Um, it's like I tell my clients, I'd rather people be intrigued than to know for certain what's going on in my life. You know what I mean? The less people know, the better they can shit on you. <laughs> so that's what you have going on this month. A very active month for you, Leos. All right, now we're going on with Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here for Virgos? What can they expect for this month of June 2023? Oh, okay. We have a few cards that popped out. Give me one second. I am going to be uploading another video for you guys, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, what's coming to you in the next 48 hours? And um, I will be uploading. I actually recorded that last night. Um, but then I realized, you know, today is the 30th. So we might as well get the June readings. All right, Virgo. So the first cards that are popping out is the Page of Pentacles with the Six of Cups. These are the cards that flew out. So they're definitely trying to make their presence known. I see for some of you guys, you are embarking on a journey of figuring out exactly what it is that you want to do in regards to a family situation. So for some of you guys, it could be, uh, as an example, there may be changes in the home that are happening right now. For some of you guys, it could be like, you know, your kids are moving out or your kids are going to college or um, for others of you, it could be like having the need to step up in regards to some type of responsibility. Um, it could be like having the need to step up and care for or uh, do something for your parents type of energy, whether it's your dad or your mother. Um, but that's what's coming on very strongly here. It's almost like the, you're going to be experiencing having the need to support, whether it's monetary or on an emotional level. Uh, there is a need of caring for someone Um in your home or what you would consider your home. So uh, what's coming to mind for a lot of you guys could be a mother or father figure that is going to be needing from you this month. We're going to put them back in the deck and I'm going to keep shuffling. Let's see what is unfolding for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month. June 2023, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, so we have here the Queen of Swords. The Eight of Wands, King of Swords. Wow, we have the Queen and King here, Ten of Swords. All right, so what I'm hearing off the bat for a lot of you Virgos, I feel like those of you guys that have been single for a while, that is quickly coming to an end. And I feel like the month of June is going to be very proactive when it comes to your love life. It's almost like there's a spark uh, that's lighting uh, for you guys. Now, we do have here um, the king and queen of swords. So this could indicate, and they are giving each other back to back. Um, so for some of you guys, it can indicate some, some type of like higher, deeper type of connection that you've had or that you've experienced. Um, and this could have been very recent because we do have the eight of wands here. So if you're single, for those of you guys that are single out there, if there was some type of communication, right, and this indicates to me fast communications, it could be like if you were talking to someone through social media, there's some type of app or uh, just, you know, ex exchanging a text or whatever. And all of a sudden it felt like it kind of stopped or like communication kind of just dropped and no one really put effort in that. I feel like the reason for it is because you're dealing with someone that has experienced a lot of the experiences that you yourself have experienced. And what I'm hearing is for a lot of you guys, it is almost like unhealed trauma that you guys are kind of carrying baggage, if you will. And I feel like you guys have been hurt or disappointed so much that you are expecting for them to be the ones to do the reaching out or the chasing and vice versa. They're feeling the same way. And you can't really blame each other because I feel like you guys really have gone through it. But I feel like this is a genuine connection. Why? Because we have the, the same king and queen of the same uh, suit. So this is indicating to me, like right now you guys are experiencing some type of mirror type of effect where 
you guys are acting based on how each other are making the other feel. But in reality, it has more to do with ego and pride or the fear of getting hurt, which is ego and pride. Um, but I feel like that's going to be, it's going to change. The dynamic is definitely going to change sometime this month in June. Now, for those of you guys that are in a serious, you know, uh, committed relationship, the same, the same thing applies. I feel like you guys have almost gotten to a point where you feel like you guys are very disconnected from your partner, but it's not that there's disconnection. I feel like it has more to do with the fact that you guys are being extremely critical and judgy of each other. And that's what's creating the stagnation or the feeling of not being on the same page. But like I said, I feel that that's quickly coming to an end. Now, you do have here the death card as well. So there is major transformation that's happening. For some of you guys, I'm going to be honest, the first scenario that I spoke about, I feel like this is a person that it was not accidental. You didn't meet them by accident. There is a purpose for this. Death is transformation and transmutation. Now, when I'm being told that you guys are kind of marrying each other, it indicates to me that you guys are carrying the same type of drama. Drama and trauma. <laughs> And what that means is that the reason why you guys have came together or the reason why you guys are dealing with each other or will be dealing with each other is because there is unhealed trauma that needs to be healed in order, in order to fully embrace and transmutate this energy so that you guys can be the amazing, beautiful people that you were meant to be. And I do see higher elevation of commitment here with the Hierophant. So if you have not met this person, you will be meeting this person this month. June, um, because there is definitely, it's almost like, um, they come out of nowhere and communication is amazing, but do not be surprised if it kind of stops or you're being challenged and you start to feel like, well, I'm not going to reach out until they reach out. Just know that if you're experiencing that, or if you experience that, you guys are mirroring each other's energy. And I feel like both of you guys are wanting to, connect but it's like you guys are scared so you guys are just pushing each other away but this is only temporary uh i don't see it lasting very long and like i said lasting very long as as in regards to like not being in sync um but i do see the potential for a major transformation that brings in to you the type of commitment you've been looking for now you do have the strength card passion is there your intuition is there oh my goodness the emperor and the nine of cups, you guys, this is a, this is your destiny taking place right now, Virgo. Strength card, the high priestess, the emperor. These are major arcanas with the nine of cups. So strength is being confident, believing in yourself. High, uh, the high priestess is trusting the process. Even if you don't see what is unfolding, trusting that it's beneficial for you. There is a higher divinity that's taking place right now that is going to bring to you the type of stability or the type of structured connection and relationship that you've been hoping for and nine of cups wish fulfillment coming through for you so very very beautiful reading virgo all right my lovelies now let's go to libra let's see what's going on with libra sun moon rising venus what are the messages for libra Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we have cards popping out here. All right, Libra, we have here the Emperor card. This is about uh, the need for structure, the need for stability. What they're telling you, Libra, is stop being so stuck in the mud right now. Um, being stubborn about your way of living or your way of viewing certain things is not bringing to you changes and you need to be more open. Uh, so openness needs to happen here. For some of you guys, if this is in regards to relationships and partnerships, the emperor indicates that there is almost a stubbornness to you that it's really difficult for you to break away from, but that's a detriment to that's a detriment to your growth. Um, so my advice to you guys is try the best you can for this month of June to embrace 
new opportunities to open your mind up to be more open um and to not be so judgy libra <laughs> for this month of june all right we're gonna put it back in the deck let's see what's going on with libra sun moon rising venus what's going on with libra sun moon rising venus for this month of june all right here we go all right libra we have the two of cups that was definitely the energy i was sensing with the the emperor card the emperor card could symbolize like being really stubborn um being stuck you know like this is the way i think and i'm not gonna change uh or getting to the point of saying you know i'm old enough i'm to this age and at this point in my life i'm not gonna change for anyone or anything but having that type of cynical uh, mentality is not really gonna make headway or bring to you new experiences and with the two of cups here right at the center it's indicating that partnerships is something that is going to be very important for you this month it could be partnerships in regards to relationships it could be partnerships in regards to business and the financial aspect however twos are also duality so for those of you guys that are single out there if you're trying to meet a person that is right for you you need to open up and be less cynical and less judging because what's really standing out to me here is the hands. And as you guys can see here, very different skin tones. So because it's standing out a lot for some of you guys, the partner that's right for you or the partner you've been searching or hoping for is not going to come in the package that you're used to. So less cynical, less judgy Libra. All right, your next card here is the Nine of Wands, and this is the obstacle that needs to overcome, that you need to overcome. Nine of Wands is being extremely guarded. It's like, you know what? I've been through it. I've gone through it. I'm going to build this huge wall of China, and you're going to have to like get find a way to get through it if you really care for me, right? Without realizing that other people have gone through experiences as well, and they may feel the same way, and they may have the right to feel the same way. So what they're telling you here is be less guarded if you're really trying to embrace or open yourself up to a true connection. It's kind of like you being your worst enemy, Libra. Five of Swords is, again, the being um, coming off very strongly for some of you guys, which I find very interesting because Libras usually are not extremely assertive. And I feel like you're coming off as extremely assertive, but the reason for it is because like your ego, right? Like I'm not going to get hurt no more. They're going to have to jump through hoops to prove something to me. But it's like running off of fear. So it's not even like genuine in the feeling of that. It's just the energy of like, like I said, being a bit critical of other people and how they react or how they act uh, without realizing that they could be judging you as well because they've been through it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what they're telling you here is less judgy more open it's time to move on libra it's time to get out of the energy of i'm guarded and you know i'm going to protect myself and all of that you've been in that energy for a while it's time to open yourself up time to move on from that energy now what's crowning your energy here is the world card so for some of you guys travel may be involved for others of you you may be meeting a new person in this on this month while traveling or taking a short trip. Um, Queen of Cups is being open. Again, I feel very strongly for a lot of you guys. If you guys are genuinely trying to find a connection or trying to find love, you're going to need to be okay with being vulnerable or opening yourself up and trying the best you can. Not, I don't know why I keep hearing like, don't be so judgmental. Uh, Queen of Cups is opening yourself up, being like, okay, there's one thing to say I'm ready to start dating and another thing to genuinely be ready to start dating. So what they're showing me here is that the world is going to open up to you, Libra, or the world is going to open up to you and give you the type of love that you put out. So if you're putting out love with condition, meaning I will invest or I will give you time if you put effort and energy towards me as well, which is how it should be. 
But in the beginning stages of opening yourself up to any type of connection, you're already going into it with conditions. So again, whatever it is that you put out is exactly what you're going to be receiving. Now, your next card here is the hanged man, seeing things from a different perspective and letting go of the past, letting go of what hasn't served or what is no longer serving you. It's time to move on. For some of you guys, you've been stubborn or you've been stuck in a situation. For others, you could have been dealing with someone from the past where it's very unclear where this is going. Clearly, it's not going anywhere. What they're telling you is that it's time to turn away from that and embrace that this is an ending and I need to embrace a new beginning being confident and walking with confidence away from the past or what has you stuck, Libra. And being able to do that, you're going to fully be able to embrace um, new opportunities. Obviously, the arrows of love, more suitors, more people that you're going to connect or vibe with, but at the same time, more movement and momentum. And that's exactly what you need right now. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to... Let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right. What are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus here for this month of June 2023? Let's see what's going on. What's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Here we go. All right, Scorpio, we're starting off here with the Four of Swords and the Judgment card. So for some of you guys, um, I'm going to be completely honest. The first thing I heard when I pulled out the Four of Swords was making your health a priority. This month is going to be very important to make sure that you're resting, making sure that you are eating and not skipping meals, making sure that you are feeding your body properly. Uh, you do have the judgment card here, and this is the obstacle that you're going to need to overcome. I feel like you guys are very harsh on yourselves, or maybe you've been experiencing like being very critical about yourself, how you carry yourself. For some of you guys, this could be image as well. Um, so being very critical about your image. Now I'm going to put it out there. If you guys are going on these drastic like diets or whatnot or like starving yourself and stuff like that, be very careful. And I would highly encourage you guys to like stop starving yourselves um, because the four of swords is a weakening of the body. And with the judgment because of your critical judgment, like you're forcing yourself to do something that is or comes very unnatural to you. And you may see the consequences of this. So again, if you guys are doing like drastic things, I would highly encourage you guys to be very mindful of that or to overall get off of that um, if you don't want to be dealing with any setbacks in regards to your health, okay? All right, now the next card here is the lovers with the eight of pentacles. Now, if there was some type of disconnection or some type of temporary separation, um, there is definitely going to be momentum and movement happening this month for you guys, uh, in regards to that situation. I do see the person that you were dealing with or, uh, the one you're taking some time or some space from, uh, coming back around and wanting to, uh, make it up. There is almost a feeling of like, how do we fix it? How do we go from here? Um, and again, the judgment right as the obstacle that needs to be overcame. For some of you guys, it could have been a situation where there was almost a feeling of a disconnect. But the reason for that was because other people were getting too involved or too close to the situation or too close to the relationship. One of the things that I tell clients all the time when we're talking about relationships and partnerships is, yes, it's great to go to people you trust and people you love for advice, etc., but never give them too much information. Why? Because the reason you do, you start to, on a very subconscious level, you're not even aware of it. But what you're doing is you're pretty much setting your partner up for failure. Um, because obviously, if you're going to your friend, if you're going to your sister, if you're going to your cousin, their priority is always going to be you. And if all you're doing is complaining about your partner, obviously, there's two, sto there's two stories or two ways to a story, whatever that's called. Um... And when that happens is that, give me one second, you guys, sorry. 
And when that happens, it's like I said, their priority is always going to be you. So they're never going to side with your partner. And when you share enough information, like it gets emotions and feelings involved, and then they dislike the person and you keep going back to them, you're kind of at fault if they keep budding in your life because you allowed them to get to that point. So just be cautious and mindful of that. Now you do have here the eight of swords with the three of swords. So there could have been some type, some type of separation based on some type of betrayal, some type of hurt, some type of third party situation for some of you guys. Um, there is definitely, like I said, the wanting or the desire from your partner to want to fix things or to try to work it out. Um, but don't rush into it, you guys, especially if you haven't heard from this person in a while. And all of a sudden they're coming back and they're promising you, I promise I'm going to change, da 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 da. Don't rush into, into it if you haven't fully processed that trauma or that hurt. Why? Because oftentimes when you don't give it each other enough time and there's absolutely no connection in that separating or that temporary separation, you're missing them and you're thinking only of the positive and kind of like regressing or repressing the betrayal. So then you go back and you go back to feeling the hurt that they've caused you. And then you put yourself in a situation where you're trying to work the relationship out, but all the while you're trying to figure out your feelings and your emotions that are all over the place. It's just not a good place, you guys. So again, if you are dealing with this type of situation, do not rush into going quickly back to the person because I feel like you're going to be doing yourself a disservice and you're going to be doing them a disservice as well. If there was betrayal, if there was hurt, if there was whatever happened, give each other the space and the room to figure out what it is that both of you guys want and are you guys able to get on the same page? Do you guys want the same things? Do you guys have the same desires? If you don't, then there's no point to it. And by just rushing into it, based on emotion and not using your mind, you're going to end up regretting it and feeling like you've wasted your time and feel like they didn't change or they didn't learn or they didn't genuinely, um, they're not sorry for what they did. So again, be mindful of that Scorpio. All right, now we're going to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of June, 2023. Let's see what's going on with my Saggies. All right, here we go. All right, Sagittarius, we have here the Ten of Wands. I feel like you guys are dealing with a lot of stress right now. Um, could be your Taurus placement. Um, there is a bit of pressure in regards to where you're at right now and where you want to be in life. Um, what's really standing out to me though is the lighted way. And that's indicating to me almost like Though times are challenging or you're being pressured right now, I feel like the reason for it is on a positive aspect. It's almost like they're telling you, Sagittarius, it's time to stop being or choosing to be stuck. It's time to get it going. It's time to make it happen. It's time to want more out of life or... It's time for you to get out of what's comfortable for you. Now, your next card here is the Seven of Wands. I see you guys internalizing a lot of the experiences that you have gone through or that you've been going through. Seven of Wands is almost feeling like, like, why is this happening to me or like, what next type of energy. Um, you need to understand, Sagittarius, that 
a lot of a lot of the situations that you've experienced and this is not going to be for everyone but what they're telling me is that a lot of the experiences that you've gone through that were extremely stressful for you a lot of them have to do with the choices that you've made so it's like you cannot be surprised that things don't go out or turn out the way you wanted them when you didn't take enough time to realize if I make that choice, this is what may come from the consequences of it. So you guys have to understand, right? Sagittarius, your ruling planet is Jupiter. You're blessed by birth. And one of the things that I can honestly say, uh, dealing with clients that are Sagittarius is that a lot of the times you guys put yourself in very bad situations and the reason for it is because you kind of grow accustomed to either things falling into place or things going your way without you really trying. Now, I know for a lot of you guys, you're going to be like, no way, like, you know, I'm going through it or I've gone through it. And it's not to say you don't, everyone does. But what I'm saying is that the majority of other people that put themselves in situations that are risque usually deal with the consequences of it very quickly. Whereas you, either things fall into place or things will unfold in a positive aspect for you. And right now, what they're telling you is it's time, and I'm going to be honest, it's time to stop like feeling like the world is out to get you or stop feeling like people are against you or feeling like, you know, they're judgy or they're judging you. Um, because you're the one that kind of is, in the habit of you're kind of in the habit of torturing yourself in the aspect of doing things that you should have learned from at this point. So it's about self-responsibility is what's coming through. Yeah. Seven of swords, you know, it, it's, like stop lying to yourself or like stop feeling like the world is out to get you when you're the one that puts yourself in those situations. And then later on, other people are like, but why would you do it? And you feel like they're judging you, but they're not. They're genuinely wanting to know why you did what you did or why you put yourself in that situation. Seven of Swords is having the need to be honest with ourselves. And this is an energy from the past. So again, it, it's almost indicating to me like, Self-responsibility is going to be very important for you for this month of June. And with that self-responsibility, it's almost like there is an awareness to you that you have by natural instinct, but you refuse to acknowledge that because sometimes it's easier to turn the other way, if that makes sense. I feel like you guys' impulsiveness or you guys' um, having the tendency of going or relying on faith is being tested right now. Uh, it's almost like, yes, faith does miracles and creates miracles, but you also have to have faith in yourself and be confident in yourself and take self-responsibility for the decisions that you make. It's like the scenario of you cannot keep blaming the people that come into your life that take advantage of you Sagittarius because you're the one that's putting yourself in that situation because you trust them blindly or you trust them at face value and you've gone through this enough that you should by now realize okay this is not working out so I have to be not necessarily guarded but really trust only people that show you through actions that they are genuine people that you can trust. There is a habit of doing things that hasn't worked out for you and it's created a lot of burdens and a lot of setbacks. At this point, I feel like the universe is like, okay, it's time for you to learn self-responsibility. But the moment you actually say, you know what? It's not my fault, as an example. If all you're attracting in your life is people that manipulate you or that use you, you can't really just blame them because you're choosing them. 
So if there is a habit of choosing, as an example, if there's a habit of choosing cheaters, then you have to go within yourself and figure out what is it about you that attracts this type of energy because you must understand energy is everything. And we attract and we bring into our lives experiences, situations, and people that match that energy. If you keep attracting drama, right? Can you really blame everyone else that has or is involved in that drama? Or do you have to take a moment back, take some type of responsibility and be like, well, everywhere I go, there's some type of drama that follows. Is it me? You know, like like that TikTok. <laughs> is it me? Is it really me? Type of energy. That's the energy I'm sensing. However, I feel like there is major breakthroughs that are happening for you if, if, you take that into consideration and you realize that a lot of the people, situation and circumstances that you're dealing with or have been dealing with in the past have a lot to do with the decisions you've made and making the rational decision to move forward more confident in yourself and more mindful of what you've experienced in the past so that you can better choose the people in your life and the people that you're dealing with or the people you give your heart to, uh, Sagittarius. I almost said Gemini. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Gemini. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Capricorn. That was uh, pretty deep. Sagittarius, if you are going through that, I know how hard it is because one of the most difficult things for anyone that knows about shadow work, one of the most difficult things in life is to do shadow work, is to work on ourselves. Because that means that we have to take a really hard look at ourselves and we don't like to do that. It's easier to point the finger. It's easier to blame the world or out to get me. I, you know, I have people that I've dealt with that they're like, you know, since birth, I've had nothing but bad luck. And it's like, having a conversation with them within 15 minutes, I realize it's their energy. So yeah, you can go about, you know, complaining that life and people and the world is out to get you, but like you're, you're attracting that. So there's something within you that needs to change in order to fully be able to experience a different outcome. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Capricorns. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can they expect for this month of June 2023? If you guys are interested in the our book, Manifest Your Destiny, um, or any of the journals, you can find those in the description box below. If you guys are trying to set up uh, appointments for consultations, tarot readings, or any of the services we provide, you'll be able to find all of that on the descriptions uh, box below. All right. Here we go, Capricorn, Capis. What's going on with Capis for this month, June 2023? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Capricorns. All right, your first card here is the Three of Wands. You're waiting on something, Capricorn, for some of you guys. For some of you guys. <laughs> um, there's almost this feeling of like, momentum in regards to your energy for some of you guys i'm even feeling a bit giddy so some type of inspiration some type of excitement for some of you guys <laughs> even waiting on excitement <laughs> now you also have here the wheel this is uh very interesting so i feel like for a lot of you guys there's going to be a lot of expansion uh, a lot of changes that are happening in your life right now Capricorn, I see a lot of travel for you guys. So this could be like short travel or long travel, but I definitely do see travel here. Now, what I'm also being shown here is for some of you guys, there is almost like I see you guys doing you. And right when you're so focused on yourself, Capricorn, I feel like someone's coming back around. Let's look further into this. It could have been a situation where you felt rejected or where you felt like they weren't as interested or they weren't putting a lot of effort, but there is a transition that's happening here. So not sure, not sure if it has to do with the fact that 
I feel like while you were feeling rejected or you were feeling like they weren't putting enough effort, the person that you were dealing with or could have potentially been dealing with probably felt the same, but they felt like you weren't interested. Or perhaps some of you guys, like you had too much going on. I see. Okay, this is uh, painting a clearer picture for me. All righty. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is Capricorn. If you guys were dealing with the situation where you felt like the person completely disconnected from you, you're going to be hearing back from them. And I feel like insecurities got the best of them. Um, what's showing me here with the Empress and the Nine of Swords, I feel like they felt either that you weren't interested or they felt like you were too out of their league. There was something about your life or something about you that it almost seems to me like on display here with the Empress, whether it's through social media or anything like that, something about you kind of intimidated them where they felt like you were out of their league or you were too much um, or like maybe you would want more than what they were able to, to offer you. So there was a feeling of rejection here. Not sure if you were feeling that or they themselves were feeling that, but I feel like they're coming to the realization that yes, they are interested in you. They're coming to the realization of, you know, I kind of do have feelings for Capricorn and they're starting to see like, their insecurities. It's almost like an acknowledgement of their insecurities and they're taking action towards you. Wanting to get your attention, they will definitely be reaching out this month. Uh, with the Queen of Swords and the Six of Pentacles, I feel like you're a bit hesitant, Capricorn. However, Six of Pentacles and Tower is like a major shift that happens and you guys are able to exchange energies in a very positive way. So, what I'm getting is these, I don't know why I keep seeing ants. Um, okay, so what I'm sensing is if you guys were dealing with the situation where you felt like there was a disconnect or you guys just off the bat start, stopped communicating, there's going to be a pickup of that energy this month. And I feel like what got the best of them was their insecurities. They felt like you were too out of their league, Capricorn. Of course you were. <laughs> or they felt like they didn't really have much to offer you. Um, however, they're really in their feelings. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it could be that they're watching you or they're seeing like you're not, you know, posting sad things. <laughs> you're moving on. And I feel that that really like your assertiveness or your the way you treat yourself or the way you love yourself, the way you value yourself is something that they are. It's like it's drawing, drawing them back to you. And I feel like they're coming in and they're coming in very assertive and they are willing. They're going to like off the bat for some of you guys, what I'm hearing is, you know, like let's go out on a date Capricorn or give me another shot. Like I'm seeing them really want to make headway with you. Um, and this could have been a situation where you felt like maybe you were feeling them Capricorn and there's a feeling of like, it didn't go well and you've moved on or you let go of that energy, but it's when you let go of that energy that they come back around and are wanting to reconnect. They're wanting to prove something to you here with the six of pentacles and the tower. So, uh, very interesting there. You guys definitely let me know how that unfolds. All right, now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Aquarius for this month of June 2023? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Aquarius. We have Temperance here with the Five of Wands, Six of Pentacles, Tower, Huh, interesting. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Capricorn. Now, I feel like what they're showing me here, right at the center is temperance. I feel like you guys have gotten out of a healing phase in your life. For some of you guys, you have been holding on for quite a while. Um, 
to this energy of I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm focusing on myself, but then you just got comfortable and then you just didn't really put yourself out there. However, I feel like that's going to quickly be changing and it's not because you're choosing Aquarius, it's because the universe is going to push you towards change. You have the Six of Pentacles here. The Six of Pentacles is being able to give and receive. It is, you're ready, you're open. With the Five of Wands here, this is energy of people trying to get your attention, people trying to fight for your attention, and the Tower, major transformation that happens. So there is definitely a shakeup that is coming to you, Aquarius, where you may not even be expecting that. And you have the Queen of Swords here with the King of Cups. This is your energy being a bit disconnected, being a bit in your head, thinking about the future. I feel like a lot of you guys are planning out or really putting energy towards your future, towards what you're wanting to do. I don't sense heavily love is something that is very important to you. However, <laughs> the universe has something else for you. Why? Because we have the King of Cups here. We have a person that is emotionally mature and emotionally available. Someone that comes to you unexpectedly or someone that comes in and rushes in very quickly. Two of Wands, sorry, Three of Wands is almost being able to see uh, how far you've come. I'm going to be honest. I see you guys focused on your lives. I see you guys focused in career or business. I don't really see you guys focused in love, but I feel that that's when it comes in. With the three of wands and the wheel, it's like, it's time to make, you know, moves about your future, yes, but also Jupiter's energy is bringing to you some type of expansion in regards to your love life, in regards to your connections. And for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that were kind of, and the reason why I'm seeing a lot of work connection here is because for some of you guys, you've been really putting a lot of effort or energy towards your work or your business, and it hasn't been that easy, but I start to see major expansion here. Um, sometimes we get so fixated on we, what we want to manifest or what we want to make happen that we grow very attached to the outcome, and that's what becomes a detriment or a blockage to it to actually unfold. So sometimes we need to get out of our own way, Aquarius, to see the results of that. I feel like for some of you guys, fear of failing or fear of not being able to see the results that you're waiting for or hoping for is something that comes very strongly. So fear is something that holds you back. For some of you guys, this could be fear of relationships as well. It could be the fear of not finding a person that's right for you or feeling like, will this ever happen for me? What Spirit is telling you is get out of your own head because it's coming to you whether you're ready or not. Three of Wands is being able to take a step back, you know, let the universe do its magic. The Wheel of Fortune is destiny taking over. The Empress is bountiful energy. This is abundance. This is love, genuine love. And the Five of Pentacles is releasing of the fear of unworthiness, whether it's unworthiness of love or unworthiness of success or unworthiness of whatever it is that you feel on a subconscious level that is kind of creating this fear that kind of freezes you. So my advice to you guys, Aquarians, is be ready for this month because I feel like there's going to be a lot of momentum and movement in regards to love or in regards to a financial breakthrough that's coming through for you very strongly this month. So awesome energy here. Sometimes we got to get out of our own way, you guys. Overthinking, overanalyzing only creates resistance and resistance is created out of fear. So, all right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with them for this month of June, 2023. What is going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of June, 2023. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, oh, it didn't flip. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, Pisces, we're starting off with the Ace of Wands. Some type of new um, exciting uh, journey that is about to begin for you. For some of you guys, this is reigniting your passion. What I'm hearing is if you felt like there's been a bit of disconnect, there's been a feeling of a lot of doubt in your life, Pisces, that's quickly going to be changing for you. I feel like your soul is being reignited. 
there's something exciting in your life that is going to be unfolding. What's standing out to me is the tears in this card. Not actual tears, but the energy of it. If you feel like you've been hurting or suffering in silence, know and understand that spirit is there with you. And they're guiding you through this process. They're guiding you through this cycle in your life. And though you may feel like there are a lot of uncertainties, things are going to become much more clear for you this month, Pisces. For some of you guys, this could be in regards to love. Ace of Cups here. As an obstacle to overcome, I feel like for some of you, and this is only going to connect with a uh, few. I feel like your love is so unmatched, Pisces. Like when you give love, you give love wholeheartedly. You don't reserve it. You give it completely and utterly devoted to the person that you care for, the person that you love. But sometimes that love is misplaced. Sometimes we go searching for love in all the wrong places. The Ace of Wands is the fire, right? It is the active energy in motion. With the Ace of Cups, you have two aces here. There is new beginnings that are unfolding in your life that for some of you, you may be unaware of. For some of you guys, you just recently experienced the death of something. So this could be the death of a relationship. It could be the death of ego. For some of you guys, it could be the death of an old way of thinking. And you're finally being able or you're challenged this month to tune in to your true nature, to your trueness, Pisces. To hold your value. To hold your love sometimes. To reserve it. For only those that are worthy of you, Pisces. Some heavy shit going on here. King of Swords is the past and passing energy. Contemplating about your decisions. Contemplating about what you've been through or the experiences that you've gone through. For some of you guys, you could have been dealing with a air sign. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. I feel like you are... There's a rebirth that's happening, and the reason I say that is because, obviously, the crow and the owl. The owl, to me, is always rebirth. It always speaks about change that is coming. So there is a change that's happening within you, Pisces. For some of you guys, it's realizing that, you know, one day you wake up and you're like, I didn't feel this for this person that I thought I was, like, you had them on a pedestal. And you start to see their flaws and you start to see that they're flawed in the way they love you because you give yourself wholeheartedly. So there is almost putting things in perspective and balance balancing them out is what's happening right now for you guys. And the star card is your destiny. It's the alignment of the stars astrologically, the placements that are happening right now, the challenges that you're going through. The experiences that you're going through have a lot to do with evolving. Your soul is growing. It's maturing. It's not going to fit well with half-assed people that love you. They have to bring in the energy that you give out. It's the giving and receiving. It's being consciously focused on what it is that you want and what it is that you know you deserve. Four of Cups is the feeling of some type of disillusionment. Seven of Cups is the energy being scattered or being all over the place. If you guys are relying or you have been going through a lot of emotional difficulties or challenges and you've been medicating yourself, self-medicating, drinking, doing drugs, whatever it is, you need to stop. That's the reason why you guys keep getting buried and buried with all these overwhelmingness of the ocean of emotions. That's going to bring you clarity. 
that's going to shake you out of this energy of feeling like you're being drowned in emotion. And things are going to be clear to you. Things are going to make sense. And hope. And excitement is what's going to come along. The emperor is the advice here. You need structure in your life, Pisces, right now. It is crucial and it is important to maintain structure. If you say you're going to start something, stick with it and finish it. See it through. Make your decisions about your future right now. And go towards that. Don't get distracted. For some of you guys, it's that you have a tendency of you get yourself in a relationship and a relationship becomes your whole life and you forget about other things, other aspects of your life. Your desires, your hopes, your dreams. I see you guys growing much more confident, much more assertive, much more in control and in power of your life. It's not until we go through the most difficult times in our life where we hit completely rock bottom that we're able to realize that once you're down, the only way is up. And I know it's easier said than done because it's not easy going through difficulties, especially when it's on an emotional level. But sometimes we have to experience that to be able to fully count our blessings. It's opening your heart to the possibilities, opening your heart to what you truly deserve, Pisces. And this Queen of Wands here with all of these lights, all of these candles, it's like reigniting your passions, your desires, even through inspiration or being inspired or inspiring others that have gone through what you've gone through. It's speaking your truth and inspiring others. For some of you guys, if you guys have gone through some type of trauma, you've been thinking about writing, creating a blog, um, speaking about it, being more proactive about what you've gone through. If you've been thinking about that, you should definitely move forward in that because it's going to bring to you a lot of healing, especially being able to connect and relate to others. Is what's going to inspire you. Beautiful energy. I know that it's difficult. It's never easy going through traumas. Going through. <sighs> Emotional is always much more hurtful than physical. Take it from someone that has gone through physical. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at the fact that. I have dark humor. Don't judge me you guys. <laughs> Alright so. Moving on. All right, let's go to Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of for this month of June, two thousand twenty-three. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I did not. I want to clarify, you guys. Um, I was not laughing at the thought of physical abuse. Um, I would never make fun of that. Take it from someone that has experienced that. Um, in very... It's very scarring and I'm not laughing at that. It's just that my defense mechanism has always been dark humor. Um, so yeah. Anyways, all right, here we go. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for them. What is unfolding for them this month of June, 2023? Okay. You guys have been following me for a while. Obviously, you guys know my personality. <laughs> all righty. Okay, so we're starting off here with the sun. Very powerful energy, Aries. I see you guys very, very influenced by the sun. 
Um, so it could be right now, depending on where you have your Gemini placement um, or your Leo placement is uh, very prominent right now. I see the restoration of your physical health. So for some of you guys, if you guys were dealing with any type of health issues, uh, you're going to start to notice that your physical body actually starts to become much more stronger. If there was some type of recent surgery or anything like that, I do, I do see very, very fast recovery. Um, beautiful energy here. I see you guys very inspired. I see you guys very excited. For some of you guys, there is a childbirth or some type of child that is bringing a lot of joyful energy to your life. Um, this could be a grandchild. This could be a child um, that you mothered or, or that you recently had or that your partner recently had. And there is great cause for celebration here. A lot of fire energy, Aries. I see you guys really expanding this month. A lot of momentum, a lot of blessings, even unexpected blessings for some of you guys, I definitely see unfold. Now, I do want to make it clear. For those of you guys that are not trying to get pregnant, please be careful because I do see an unexpected pregnancy coming through for you. And I feel like it was very spontaneous or very unplanned, like it's definitely going to catch you by surprise. Um, so if you guys are not trying to get pregnant, uh, just be careful if you're not trying to impregnate your girl or whoever you're being with. Uh, just be cautious about that because I do see them or you extremely fertile around this time. I see a lot of happiness, a lot of contentment um, unfolding for you guys. I feel like you guys have really one of the signs that has been quite challenged the past couple of years. And it's almost like there's a cause for celebration for some of you guys, either embracing a committed relationship uh, or some type of manifestation in regards to commitment. Um uh, for some of you guys, this could be that you're entering into a phase of some type of higher level commitment. Um, for others of you, it's finally healing from the past and fully being able to open up and embrace um, love and romance. There is, there is this feeling of moving on. And I feel very strongly... I feel like for some of you guys, you're getting to the point of opening yourself up to love and the possibilities of love. That's if you're not already dealing with someone new. Um, but I feel that around this time, there is someone that will be reaching out or will be wanting to reach out to you. But the only reason why they're doing it is because they see you moving on or they see you flourishing or glowing. Um, my advice is embrace the newness, Aries. Don't go back to the past because I feel for a lot of you guys, you're going to be challenged this month in regards to like being happy or being content, but then someone reemerges from the past and it's like, you're kind of hesitant about it. And I feel like that's just the universe kind of testing you. Are you willing to jeopardize what is bringing happiness or fulfillment to you over something of a what if? And if it would have, it would have by now. So again, keep it pushing, Aries. Do not go back to an ex. Do not go back to people from the past. Fully embrace this energy because I feel like this month is going to be very crucial and very beneficial for you. In regards to momentum, in regards to breakthroughs, in regards to um, the beginning of something that has the potential for something long term. And you don't want to uh, jeopardize that for anything from the past. Now, this could be in regards to career and finances as well. You start to make headway. You start to get acknowledged. You get raises. You're getting or being put in positions of more authority but I feel like the uncertainty or the fear of uncertainty, am I able to make it? Am I able to do it? Am I able to take more responsibilities? I feel like there may be some type of hesitation there. And if you embrace that hesitation, obviously it's going to keep you where you're at right now. And you don't want that. You want momentum. If we're not growing, we're not expanding. And if we're not expanding, we're no, you know? 
We're stuck and you don't want that. It's about growth. It's about advancement, Aries. All right, my lovelies. And finally, let's get to my beautiful Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus for this month of June, 2023. See what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of June, 2023. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Taurus. We're starting off here with the Two of Cups. Ooh, there is definitely love in the air. For some of you guys, this could be partnerships. This could be uh, connecting on an emotional level. Uh, for others of you, it's exchange of energy. So for some of you guys, I do see the communication opening up or perhaps for some of you guys communicating through text, through social media. Your next card here is the Page of Wands, and this is the obstacle that needs to be overcome. Page of Wands is quick momentum and communication. So uh, communication is going to be a bit of a challenge for you. I feel like for some of you guys, it could be because you... <laughs> okay, so this is not going to be for everyone, but for some of you guys, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm hearing... It's like you guys are so disconnected from like the dating or the dating energy. Um, it's 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 giving very much like uh, things have changed. <laughs> um, fully embrace this energy, Taurus. I feel like there's going to be a lot of possibilities when we're talking about love and romance in your love life, specifically for this month. A lot of fiery, exciting energy with the Two of Cups right at the center. It is about really, you know, giving yourself the opportunity of being childlike. Um, and childlike in the aspect of seeing life through very brand new eyes. You know, being excited about the smallest or simplistic things in life is going to bring to you a lot of positivity, a lot of momentum as well. So... What is it that you're doing new, Taurus? What is it that, you know, what is it that uh, you're picking up on? For some of you guys, this could be a new hobby. For others of you, it's looking into or researching um, new knowledge that is going to open up your mind, that it's going to bring to you a lot of momentum. And there is definitely momentum here with the three of wands is really... What I'm seeing is for some of you guys, I'm not going to lie. I see you guys connecting with someone from a distance. So it could be someone that you connect on through social media, through some type of dating app or whatnot. That is not necessarily local, but I do see them actually putting the <laughs> putting the effort to definitely make it happen or make this connection unfold. We have the tower here with the king of cups. So there is a, this is definitely not expected. I feel like this connection is off the chain. And like I said, I feel like you guys are definitely not really, maybe initially you're a little bit turned off because of distance, but I feel like this person is definitely going to make it very known that it's going to, they're going to make it worth your while. Now the Emperor's card here, this is your advice card. No, this is Venusian energy, Taurus. So Definitely stay in your power. Know what you deserve. And do not be surprised if a person that is from a distance is actually making effort and energy and setting dates and everything to go out, to take you out, to get to you, and to be able to give you the time of day. Like, you deserve it. You deserve the Empress's royal treatment, right? <laughs> it is. And with the King of Cups, it's a person that is emotionally mature and emotionally available to really bring to you um, that connection, that proving to you, not through words, but through actions. Seven of Swords is the energy of what's influencing you. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're being challenged a little bit this month in regards to, and it's funny because I did mention the royal treatment you deserve. So for some of you guys, you know, everyone has been treated very differently in relationships, but I feel like in the past for a lot of you, you've been okay with the bare minimum and when a person shows up and they start to be very thoughtful as an example there is a difference between someone inviting you out on a date versus someone that invites you on a date gives you the time sets everything up they pick you up they know exactly where they're taking you or they show up with a small little token or a gift um 
very different type of treatment is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like kind of questioning, like, is this, you know, too good to be true? And this is how you deserve to be treated, Taurus. So try the best not to be so much in your head. Try the best to not let the alarms go off, right? They're treating you very different and in a good way. And you're questioning what are their motives? What is this? What is that? And what Spirit is saying is this is the treatment you deserve, Taurus. You should be embracing this. So Seven of Swords is almost like don't go on the energy of like thinking that, you know, that there's hidden motives behind them treating you. If a person is treating you kindly and they're treating you uh, very well, obviously it's because they're prioritizing you, right? Because they're making an actual effort. That's what they should be doing. Whereas maybe you're not used to that type of treatment. So again, I want to highly encourage you guys to not be so guarded. This is how you should be treated. And again, we're talking about the past. So maybe comparing, maybe this person is someone with the Empress. Maybe this is someone that is financially stable. You're not used to that. So they show up and they show up with gifts or they take you to a very good restaurant and you're feeling like it's too much. Um, but it's not. You deserve that. You deserve that and you deserve much more. So again, it's about knowing your worth, knowing that you deserve to be treated well, Taurus, and letting go of the past, letting go of the, the traumas, letting go of the experiences that you've gone through. You're no longer in the past. You got to keep it moving and... At the same time, don't drag your baggage into new relationships because obviously it will affect. If you're able to let go of the past and fully embrace this new opportunity, fully embrace um, the world, you know, the world, the universe surprising you with beautiful blessings, the more you're in that expectancy, the more the world and the universe open opens up to you. The Tower and the Nine of Cups is unexpected wish fulfillment. So again... I feel that uh, there's going to be a lot of excitement this month for you guys. I feel like there is definitely a deep connection that is unfolding here that may come off as a bit uh, restrictive in the beginning. And I feel for some of you guys, it's because of distance, but they're quickly going to show you that uh, they're in it <laughs> and they're interested and they're chasing you, Taurus. So um, good for you. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, I want to wish you guys the very best. You guys definitely stay tuned for uh, the next video that I'm going to be uploading. Um, and I want to wish you guys all the very best for this month of June 2023. And we will see each other soon. Until then, bye.